Anna Bardell. Thank you very much, you. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and it is uh, an honour and a pleasure to follow my honourable friend for Ross Sky and Lochaber. He has led us with diligence, with dedication, and he will continue to be a champion for Scottish independence and an icon in our movement. And Mr Deputy Speaker, we've heard it all today, haven't we? Scotland, get back in your box. You've had your democracy. You've had your referendum. It only happened once. And the lies that were told to the people of Scotland and the promises that were made during both the referendum in 2014 and during the EU referendum are now coming home to roost. And it is precisely because we care so passionately about our education system, about our health system, about the citizens in Scotland for whom the decisions and the mess that is being made in Westminster is having such a profound impact that we want independence. It is because Westminster <coughs> has failed Scotland so abjectly that we so desperately want independence and that more and more people in Scotland want independence as well. And Mr Deputy Speaker, every six days a country in the world celebrates Independence Day from Great Britain and not one of them has gone back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> independence is normal and I cannot wait for Scotland to join that list of independent nations. Here, here. And here's another list, Mr Deputy Speaker. Free prescriptions, no tuition fees, free bus travel for under 21s and over 60s, mm -hmm. free personal care for the elderly, game-changing Scottish child payment of £100 a month, baby boxes, no hospital parking fees, no bridge tolls, mitigation of the UK bedroom tax, world-leading climate policies, which include an energy transition fund, a green jobs fund and a just transition fund, redeploying of Syrian and other refugees in our NHS and public services, standing up to this Tory government against Brexit, which Scotland didn't vote for, bringing forward some of the most progressive policies, policies for LGBTQ people, including for the trans community, while many here, in this here. government demonise them. I could go on. These are just a few of the life-changing and life-enhancing <laughs> policies that the SNP have pursued since coming to power in Scotland. And we do that, Mr Deputy Speaker, with limited devolved powers and with one hand tied behind our back. Yeah. I'm happy to give one. Listed what she believes are achievements. Are there areas she feels the Scottish Government have failed? I think that one of the biggest challenges we face is the fact that we are still governed by and large and with so much of the power lying here at Westminster. I am not saying that we are perfect. No government and no leader is perfect. But the reality is that we are doing our very best and filling the holes, exactly. the massive holes in our budgets pounds. that are being created by this Westminster Tory government. Now, imagine what we could do with the full powers of independence. Because at the end of the day, Mr Deputy Speaker, Scotland was the country that, that, that invented the modern world. So today is an opportunity for this Tory government to reflect on the realities of democracy and indeed on that Supreme Court judgment and listen to people in Scotland and to respect democracy and facilitate Scotland's right to decide her own future. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because if Labour and or Tory uh, governments came forward at the next election, or indeed other parties, uh, with a proposal to rejoin the EU, and they put that in their, in their manifesto, they would be allowed to have that referendum if they won. Yet, despite the fact that the SNP keep on winning elections and we keep on getting mandates, the party opposite keep denying the realities of democracy. And it's a sad reality that Labour have joined them in that dash to democracy denial. With such a poverty of ambition, they've at least had the good grace to roll out some of their greatest hits and their ancient acts. Hmm. Uh, enter one Gordon Brown. <laughs> now that's up to and including let's reform the House of Lords again, except we won't because we promised it before and it's never happened, so we'll just keep sending more people there. Roundhog Day. Tighter, stricter rules of this broken system. Give me a break. And my favourite top ten hit, Mr Deputy Speaker, more devolution. Oh great. More scraps off the broken more. Britain table. No thank you, Mr <laughs> Deputy Speaker, because in Scotland we like our democracy done the way we like our decisions made. Maximum transparency and taking us close to the lives of the people whom they affect. Mr Deputy Speaker, I grew up under a Thatcher government that destroyed Scotland's economy and left a nation yeah, yeah. riven with inequality yeah. and hopelessness. Certainly. I'm from a working class uh, single mother family who was demonised by the very first 
famous female Prime Minister, representation we have found in the Tories does not equal greater equality. And in my teens, I grew up with new hope under new Labour, only to see disappointing and dismal leadership on issues such as the illegal invasion of Iraq and the cash for owners scandal. Because the reality is, it doesn't really matter who's in power in this place or at that dispatch box. This system is broken, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Now, we've heard the Lord's Reform song for a very long time from Labour. And if you read the memoirs of one of my predecessors, the late great Robin Cook, you'll understand just how appallingly he was treated by his own party over his attempts to reform the Lords. So I'm sorry, I don't buy it. And neither do folk in Scotland. Poll after poll put an independence increasingly over 50 per se. And we in Scotland are frankly sick of funding the UK government's mismanagement and failed endeavours in government. And a majority of people in Scotland haven't voted for for most of my lifetime. And the words of Robert Burns were bought and sold for English gold, such a parcel of rogues in a nation. Now, speaking of rogues, let's talk about what this UK Tory government have done in office. Lied to people over Brexit and continue to rip up workers and human rights under our membership of the EU. Ridden roughshod over the Good Friday Agreement, threatening peace in Northern Ireland and abandoning people for their narrow anti-EU ideology. Destroyed the UK's global reputation, cut benefits to the poorest and brought forward policies like the abhorrent rape clause and two-child cap, which makes the lives of many vulnerable women even more precarious. They've crashed the economy with an ill-judged mini-budget and failed austerity. They've cut international aid and turned its back, their back on the most in need, just as the world faces a global climate catastrophe <coughs> and so many horrors of war and famine. And they've lined the pockets of their cronies and pals with the PPE VIP lane, done absolutely nothing to reform the Lords and get rid of the other unelected chamber, which still has some of Putin's own allies in it that this Tory government put there. So when they stand there and they talk about the war in Ukraine, and yes, the money that they have given for defence spending and support, they forget the river of dirty Russian money that has flowed through the UK financial system for decades while they've sat on their hands and done nothing. And we've had a revolving door of Prime Ministers too incompetent to deal with the basics of leadership and government, soaked in scandal and impropriety, to put it mildly. This place doesn't serve anyone other than itself, Mr Mr. Deputy Speaker. Now, a significant number of UK's biggest exports are indigenous to Scotland. Oil and gas, whisky, salmon, to name but a few. We produce six times the amount of gas that we consume and 80% of our electricity comes from low carbon sources. But we are trapped in an energy market in a UK system that has profit squeezed from it at every turn and creamed off for the wealthiest at the top. So while our constituents starve and freeze in one of the richest parts of the world, the few are raking it in, the rich get richer, and the poor die under this system and this Tory government. And Scotland has had enough. Now, right now, according to the National Grid, as Scotland's energy market booms, our energy flows from north to south to keep the lights on in England. So it's very clear why the British state doesn't want Scotland to become independent. And I'm sure when we get independence, Mr Deputy Speaker, we will be happy to negotiate in good faith and supply their energy at a reasonable cost. Because, Mr Deputy Speaker, I I don't just want better for Scotland. I want better for people in England and Wales and Northern Ireland. And I genuinely believe that the broken system of Westminster government is serving every nation in this family of nations very, very poorly. And I know that the powers that be are scared that Scottish independence will lead to a recalibration of relations between the nations of the UK and how the UK is governed. And that is no bad thing. Because, Mr Deputy Speaker, the culture of this place is broken. The standards and the rules are frequently broken. Britain is broken and it needs a fresh start. So we look forward to a brighter, greener, healthier future as an independent nation in the European Union, standing proudly on the world stage, shoulder to shoulder with other nations to do our bit. And to our friends and family in the European community, as my colleague and friend from Stirling once said, Europe, please keep the lights on for us. Mm-hmm. Meantime, Mr Deputy Speaker, to our friends here in the UK, we'll keep the lights on for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Liz Savile-Roberts. Yeah, yeah.